Hey, this is Sam from Guinea Fowl, and you're listening to Torrent This with Dando. Welcome back to Torrent This with Dando on 94.7 The Pulse. And now I'm joined on the line by the founder of a band who, after releasing their debut EP titled Hello Anxiety earlier this year, have just wrapped up their The Lie Is National Tour, and they'll be performing this year at the Falls Music Festival in Lawn. We're, of course, talking about Guinea Fowl, and I'm lucky to be joined on the line by Sam Guinea Fowl Yellman himself. Sam, thanks for your time, man, and how's things? Uh, it's good, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Busy week? Uh, yeah, it actually has been a busy week. Even though we've finished the tour, we've had lots of little things to do, and we had our um, Guinea Fowl Christmas barbecue last night with all our partners and stuff like that. That's so, pretty cool. Uh, feeling a bit dusty today, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plans for Christmas? Um, I'm just recording. Like, I'm, I'm really busy demoing... Um, stuff for the album that we're going to release next year. So my Christmas is going to be pretty much in my home sort of studio, which isn't really a studio, it's just a computer and a keyboard. But, yeah, in that studio. I'm going to call it a studio. Yeah. So that's pretty much where I'm going to be. Is there anything you're hoping to get? Uh, from Santa? Yes, from Santa Claus himself, yeah. Just some socks. I'm, like, so out of socks. Really? Um, yeah. I, I, I'm incapable of keeping socks, so I'd really like some of them. Just, and, you know, like... Clothes, basically. I hate it when people buy me clothes. They always buy me the wrong size or just not what I would wear. Oh, really? Like, I, I, I seem to never have that problem, and, and clothes are very practical. <laughs> and I never I never can be bothered to go and buy clothes, so I like being given them. <laughs> you must be excited to be playing Falls in a couple of weeks, man. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be really fun. What day of the festival are you actually playing? We're playing the, the first day. We're playing on the 29th. Yep. Uh, we're playing on the main... Like, the main stage is the only one that's sort of going at that point, yep. we're playing sort of in the afternoon, um, there's, a, there's, you know, nearly half a dozen acts before us, so we're settled quite nicely in the in the early afternoon, um, but on a massive stage, so I think we're all going to go out and buy 20 metre leads, <laughs> run around as much as possible. Are there any artists you're hoping to get the chance to have a word with? Um, yeah, ba- Beirut, I, re- I really want to um, really meet, yep. um, I saw him a couple of years ago in Sydney and he was so drunk. <laughs> um, on stage and I just want to be like dude we loved you but you were so drunk how did that happen <laughs> um, he was like really jet lagged but I want to ask you mainly how he managed to sing so well drunk how do you reckon you would go singing drunk man I'm terrible I've done it <laughs> and, and it's not a pretty sight not, not good for a karaoke bar no, no I've done it on stage and, and in front of people oh um, and yeah and it, and it, and it, and it wasn't, wasn't my best moment <laughs> Have you ever played a major festival like this before? Uh, we played Splendid in the Grass this year. Oh, nice. Um, so, so yes, yeah, our second major festival this year, which is we're very fortunate to play. And we just played on the weekend. I mean, I'm going to call it a major festival. <laughs> um, we just played Festival of the Sun in, um, in Port Macquarie. Yep. And that was, that was really great. It was a little festival. I mean, 3,000, 3, only 3,000 people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, really, it was really wicked. It was kind of a, a BYO boutique festival that was, was rad would you prefer to play in front of say 100 people in a pub or thousands at a festival oh it depends who the people are in the pub <laughs> like really dedicated people um, who are getting into it so much as opposed to like thousands of people who are kind of you know it sounds not great and they don't really know you I don't know but if it's like a pub full of bikers then I probably <laughs> wouldn't want to play the pub full of bikers <laughs> you don't think they'd appreciate your music well, I haven't had any biker people come up to me and be like, dude, that was amazing. <laughs> um, I've, I've had one be like, get out of my way. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, not, not the adoration from bikers yet. yet. <laughs> now, you guys just wrapped up the Liars tour. Did you notice any increase or change in audiences since the last time you toured? Um, no, because the last time we toured was with Foster the People. Yep. So, if anything, it was a, it was a decrease in audiences. <laughs> Like, they sold out everywhere they planned to sold them out again this time they're coming back. Um, so I don't really want to compare our tour to their tour. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, a really, it was a really good tour. What's the crowd interaction like at your gigs? It depends, again, and like, what time, I guess, night and where we are. Like, sometimes it's, like, it, they just want straight, um, like, get on with the music and make us dance, and sometimes they want interactions, they want banter. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm not very good at banter, but, but sometimes people yell things out. Yeah. Um, the police turned up to our to our Sydney show that we played. Why? Um, so that I guess that was a new type of crowd. <laughs> I never had the police come um, with a dog that was sort of wandering around the audience. Was it for because of you guys? Like, what? Why were they there? 
I think they were there for drugs, like to, to sniff oh. drugs. Um, <laughs> or they could have been there for noise, either or. I'm assuming you guys don't do drugs. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Do you do you come out and meet with fans after a show? Yeah, definitely. Um, like to 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 talk and um and we've got we've got some pretty dedicated people who come see us quite a lot. So it's always nice to walk off stage and have them go. That was really good because they've seen you a bunch of times. Yeah. Or it's not nice for them to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, which doesn't happen that much. But but yeah, no. It's it's. I always like to talk to people after shows. After hearing Botanist and Little Fingers a few months back, I added them to my driving playlist because, like, I really love them. How often do you listen to your own music in your spare time? Oh man, I'm really ashamed to say heaps because <laughs> I I demo by myself a lot. Um, most of my car music is my own demos, trying to yep. trying to think of what's wrong with them or trying to restructure them or something like that. And it's really bad because, like, I have my window down in the traffic <laughs> light, like blasting my own demo and. You know, someone will look at me funny, um, and I'll kind of give them a thumbs up and drive off. If they start bopping their head, it's a good sign. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. Someone at the traffic light to stop bopping their head, and I go, yes, yeah. I'm on the right track. What do you prefer listening to, the finished studio products or the home demos? Oh, well, I don't uh, know. I prefer my demos, um, really, because I, I kind of know everything that has gone into them. Um, I've yet to kind of have a studio recording that I've preferred to my demo. It sounds like a really awful thing, but um, uh, I get, actually, I, I correct myself. The EP, the EP tracks um, were a lot better than my demo. <laughs> um, but, but I just prefer sort of listening to, um, I don't know, listening to the clank, clanky way that I record. Who's usually the first person you show a new demo to? Um, depends. Usually, usually it's the band. Yeah. Sometimes it's mum. Um, I just showed a demo to like my, my stepdad the other day, and and he was walking past. I'm sort of at my family house in the moment for Christmas, and he's walking past, um, and I heard him humming it. And, mm. Yes, I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, damn, Facebook and stealing my anecdotes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, so it just depends on who's around, really. I'm, I make the mistake of showing people them way too early, and they they don't they don't like get what I'm sort of doing. Cause yeah, thirty seconds of me screaming like, <laughs> that's not great and I'm like but it will be um, yeah how important do you think social media like Facebook and YouTube have been to your success so far I don't know I don't know Facebook's done done like amazing amazing things like I, I guess it, what it does is it, it makes you uh, connect a lot more with the people who listen to music and that I really like um, YouTube has been good in that um, like that's how I started a botanist got a clip made for um, for Triple J Unearthed and and it kind of exceeded the what the other clips were sort of getting because it's a great clip and um, yeah, it's really good. That, yeah, it built us up a little bit, and then the little fingers sort of did the same. So yeah, YouTube's awesome because you can access clips all the time. Um, eventually, I think I think Facebook will play a bigger role if if you sort of get more people on there and, and get more interactions going. I think that's really good. It creates a community around a band. And you guys have a, is an Instagram competition going at the moment? We do, yeah. We've um we've uploaded way too many photos. So <laughs> we're kind of a bit obsessed with Instagram, and we're so hipster, and we're uploading photos. And you can enter it, and you can win a book of our photos. But most of the photos I take of our drummer Nick, and like he pouts, <laughs> a mother, you know, can't, yeah. can't swear, but oh, you can if you want. Okay. But, um, but he just he just he loves pouting, and so all the shots make him look like an absolute wanker. Yeah. He's a <laughs> lovely guy, but he's just pouting in every photo that I've taken of him. The the EP Hello Anxiety has been an amazing debut for you guys. But was the final product what you'd envisioned, or are you like a perfectionist that's never one hundred percent satisfied with your own work? Yeah, I'm definitely one of those annoying people. I'm pretty rarely happy with <laughs> some work, but um, but I was proud of it definitely. I was very proud of the, the EP, and it, and it came from a like a lot of hard work from myself on my own, and then a crazy period in a studio for 48 hours. So I was pretty happy with what we got out. It's been out for a while now. Like you've toured it nationally. Which song is the most fun to perform? Um, the I think it's the third track, "My Lonely Arms." It's like yep. a swearing song. Yep. Um, every time we play that live, um, it gets people dancing. Okay. It's just like a 50s kind of. Um, like rock and roll tune, yeah, yeah, kind of attempt at one of them, and it, and it just gets people swinging. And I like that. Were there any songs recorded that you felt could or should have made it on? Mm, 
no, like we recorded the five songs I had at the time, and <laughs> I've only recently recorded another song. Like I'm such a slow writer. <laughs> um, the but like so no, I, I didn't sort of regret not putting anything on. I didn't have anything else to put on. Um, but it all happened so quickly. I didn't. We've been touring so much and playing so much. It's only now that I'm sitting down and like getting to all the work that I've been doing over the past year. When can we expect a full length album release? I reckon halfway through next year. Depends on how productive I am in the next couple. Of <laughs> Got any titles planned yet? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. Uh, maybe guinea pig. Guinea, <laughs> yeah, foul mouth, something <laughs> like that. I don't know, some bad pun on guinea fowl. Do you think if like your nickname guinea pig never transitioned to guinea fowl, that you still would have called your band that? No, definitely not. <laughs> It'd be something way cooler, like I don't know, the monster. Killing Squad or something like that. That, that's, that's, not very, that's not very cool. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not much cooler than guinea pig. No. Um, I, no, I would definitely not be called guinea pig. <laughs> I've read a lot of online reviews on your music. Are these something you pay particular attention to? I try not to. Um, like, you're always going to have people who like or dislike your music. It's, 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 that's the way it is about putting art out there um, or, or whatever. But So no, I, I try not to. I used to when I started and I, I used to get really angry and really upset and write like these emails in response but I never sent any because I'm a warmer. but I wanted to especially when people oh man especially when people like for no reason criticise you on based on the most bizarre thing yeah um, yeah but, but no I try not to so you can take constructive criticism but you don't like just being criticised for nothing uh, yeah well I don't like being called things that I'm not but I, who would like when someone calls you, calls you like a hipster wanker and, and <laughs> you've like you've never like owned a, a fixie bike in your life, you're yeah. kind of like, what the hell? But, yeah. but you know, you, you just got a grain of salt, just let it bounce off you. So, but I try not to take notice of those sort of things. Just say that, like hypothetically, Hello Anxiety received some negative publicity. Would that have affected the way you went about writing music now? I don't know. That's hard to say. Like, I definitely have taken things that I've heard into consideration. Like. But I don't know how much, like, I think it's more subconsciously than consciously. Like, uh, criticisms have been like, that I read, have been like, oh, it's not as, because some of the EP demos were out there before the EP was, and it was like, oh, it's not as kind of raw as the EP, we want more demo stuff. And I guess, like, I guess I've, I've taken that into consideration, but not really, you know? Yeah. Um, I, can just, I can do, I do what I do, and, and it's, yeah, you kind of got to listen, listen, but not really listen. What was the main issue is being a solo artist that led to you forming the band? I sucked. Like, I was really bad. Really? Myself. Yeah, I was, try- I was trying to, like, loop. Like, I had heaps of parts of these songs, and I was trying to loop them and put beats to them, and, and it's just you just can't do it. Like, I've, I've, I know some really good Sydney guys who are doing that sort of thing at the moment, and it's so hard. You have to be so good. <laughs> and I, I wasn't that proficient at, at looping, and I wasn't that good, so I just said, no, I need a band. Did people have to audition, or did you just go out and scout people? I just I knew heaps of musicians who just finished up with their band, so I was kind of like, um, <clears throat> I was kind of like, yeah, just let's start a band. But yeah. now our drummer Nick, he 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 auditioned for our band because <laughs> um, we lost our our first drummer, um, and and he'd been in heaps of Sydney bands, and he came and did an audition. And it was pretty amazing. Why did you lose the first drummer? Did you get rid of him, or did he leave? No, no, he he moved to um, he moved to Spain. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit older than us. Like he, he's sort of in his mid late twenties, and and, um, and yeah, he he decided to move to Spain. How much input do the band members get in the songwriting process? I, I don't know. Like we haven't we we haven't really released that thus far. Not not a lot. Yeah. I think that's changing. Um, like I'm I'm showing them a lot more stuff at uh, at earlier stages, and I'm asking them what they think, and um, especially in terms of drums, like. Um, beats are not something that I'm brilliant at um, so you know having a real brilliant drummer or a real tri- brilliant bass player I mean everyone has the same input really yeah. Um, but yeah a lot more now what's more important to you writing the lyrics or the music um, I think they go hand in hand I think the, the good lyrics make the music seem better and vice versa yeah. Um, so yeah I think they're equally as important to me the lyrics are very important to me though um, I don't like fast. I don't like the songs about nothing. Yeah. Have you ever written any specific lyrics that you're particularly proud of? Um, uh, I don't know. I can't really single any out. I 
think I think most of the lyrics I end up putting on a song I'm pretty proud of. And where do you get your inspiration from for your lyrics? From personal experiences? <laughs> yeah, uh, at the moment the album stuff is all pretty personal. Yeah. The EP stuff was less, it was more observational. Yeah. And just we're running a little bit low on time, so just a couple more questions. What does 2012 hold for you? The album. Just the album? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Got any tours lined up? Uh, we do. In, in February, we're, we're doing a tour with Portugal The Man, an American band, and another American band called Give It. Yeah. They're doing a co-headlining, and we're going to support them. But, but I'm trying to downplay shows, so we've been, been saying no to a lot of things, because yeah, I want to write. And one last question. I ask this to everybody. What advice do you have for all aspiring songwriters and musicians? Um, record yourself. Yeah? <laughs> Don't, just, just, yeah, record yourself and, and get good at um, amateur mixing and, and you know, just buy Pro Tools or buy Logic or buy whatever and just keep recording yourself and record, even if you hate the sound of your own voice, which I really do. Um, you just keep recording yourself and, and you, that's how you develop good skills in terms of yourself and learning your own style because you hear yourself back. But then don't listen to yourself in the car at a traffic light. <laughs> traffic lights. You look like a weirdo. <laughs> well, there you go. If you haven't already, make sure you get yourself a copy of Guinea Fowl's debut EP, Hello Anxiety. And for all the latest news and info on Guinea Fowl, visit facebook.com slash Guinea Fowl. Once again, Sam, thanks for your time, man. Good luck with the rest of the year. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Catch you later, man. See you later.